Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Chaos in the classroom. Schools in Metro Detroit canceling classes after a series of threats were made. Plus, stepping down, White House Communications Director Hope Hicks resigns after speaking with the House Committee. We'll tell you what it means for the future of the Trump administration. Brandon? A quick switch to snow, a snowy mess ahead, and a severe weather alert. I feel like we were just looking at like St. Louis or something because there ain't no way after the beautiful weather we saw over the past couple of days yeah. that, that is our reality now. But sadly it is. Thank you for joining us everybody for Local 4 News at noon. I'm Everett Casimi and uh, meteorologist Brandon Rue. OK, so my issue with the snow at this time of the year yes. is how are we supposed to see all the potholes now? Right. You just hope they fill in with a little snow and provide a little padding. It is tough and you know, potholes will probably be the least of our concerns with all the slush slipping and sliding that is coming our way. Livingston, Oakland counties, you are under a winter storm warning all the way through the evening and tonight, the potential of five to nine inches. The rest of us winter weather advisory, three to six inches possible when all is said and done. What's the difference? Well, the longer it takes for the switch over, the less your snow accumulations and it has been coming down at a pretty good clip in Livingston and Oakland County here for a couple of hours. But here is the rain snow line right along or south of 696 and it is coming quickly. And these returns for the rain, this red and orange yellow, that is heavy, heavy rain, which means as soon as it flashes over, it's going to be whiteout conditions, at least potentially for a while. As we look at still the southern third of the area getting some rain again, all of it switching to snow. We still have to pull in more moisture from the south, which will be happening. And again, continuing this thread of moisture just pumping in here throughout the day. 30s rain to snow. It's already happening. Some of the heaviest snow bands 2 to 10 p.m. And we're looking at the chance for an inch of snow per hour. And you are advised really only drive at your own risk, Everett. Oh boy, oh boy. And with the, the snow totals and in such high numbers, Brandon, it's bound to turn the roads into a mess. And that warning is definitely taken. Local force Tim Pamplin, though, is live on the roads for you to give us a look at how bad things are or are going to get. Tim, how are the roads where you are right now? Well, it's just turned over here, Everett. We're in Auburn Hills near Oakland University. If you look on the right, you'll see the snow is sticking to the grassy surfaces. And uh, from what uh, Brandon was just saying, within the next couple of hours, this snow is going to come down at a very fast clip and will uh, start sticking to the highways and byways of our region. I just looked at the radar maps and the traffic maps. Over near Fowlerville, 96, particularly treacherous over there right now, 96 between US 23 and Fowlerville, uh, the Brighton area. Whiteout conditions out there, the traffic sensors showing up red so they're crawling along up in that area they are snow covered so as we uh, head on university road here getting north onto i-75 heading into another heavier band of snow as it starts picking up as brandon said the cutoff a dividing line between rain and uh, and snow is 696 and that's actually what's happening as we headed north on 75 it switched over north of 59 just solid snow now so we'll be out and about all afternoon getting you through this snowstorm that is a scene right now northbound i-75 at university University. Tim Pamplin, back to you, Everett. All righty, stay safe out there, Tim. Thank you for that good look there. In other news this afternoon, Plymouth Canton High School is dismissed early today as a result of an ongoing investigation after a threatening message was found in one of the schools. Canton Township Police are on the scene. Plymouth Canton High Schools include Plymouth, Salem, and Canton High Schools. Police stress that there's no immediate threat at this time and no other information is currently available, but you'll want to stay with us here on Local 4. We'll have further updates for you as we get them. Meanwhile, another local school is on the edge after a school shooting threat was reported last night at Derby Middle School in Birmingham. Now, this post was discovered in an online math forum with the threat that someone had a gun and was going to shoot. Now, although school is in session today, Birmingham police are present at that school and they'll be there for the entire day. The White House is looking for its fifth communications director in just over a year after Hope Hicks announced that she'll be leaving the job in the coming weeks. It's another high profile departure from the Trump administration. Hicks was one of the first people to join the Trump campaign after working in the Trump family business. Here's NBC's Chris Pallone on Capitol Hill with the very latest. 
Besides his own family, Hope Hicks has been President Trump's most trusted advisor in the White House. She has fought to stay out of the spotlight during her White House career, but lately she's been finding herself right in the middle of it. Today, White House officials are already considering candidates to replace Hope Hicks as White House communications director. But even when that job is filled, analysts say there will still be a large role Hicks played that will remain unfilled. Trusted confidant and aide to the president. Hope Hicks is a tremendously talented person. Hicks worked in the Trump Organization and signed on to the campaign in its earliest days. And it's not just that uh, she's been in that crucial job, it's that she has been somebody who kind of had uh, a connection to him that very few other people had. Hicks announced her resignation a day after testifying about the Russia investigation on Capitol Hill, where she apparently said she's occasionally told white lies as part of her job. She was asked, did Donald Trump ever ask her to lie? And her answer was that she never told an untruth on anything of substance. Intelligence Committee Democrats blasted Hicks' refusal to answer most questions. She said the White House told her she couldn't answer, which is actually an unlawful uh, act. White House officials say Hicks has been planning her exit for months and insist her congressional testimony had nothing to do with her resignation. A White House official says the president called her irreplaceable. He's got at least another uh, uh, a, a pretty long and isolating three to seven years ahead of him. Another surprise from the West Wing, where it appears the only constant is change. Hicks is the fourth person to serve as communications director for this White House since Inauguration Day. She's been alongside the president for every step of his campaign and his presidency, but she will be leaving the White House in the coming weeks. In Washington, Chris Pallone, now back to you. All righty, thank you, Chris. Meanwhile, the House Oversight Committee has focused on further investigating Ben Carson's pricey office redecoration. All right, you're going to want to check your pockets this afternoon. There is a big Powerball winner who has not claimed their prize, and if it's you, you might win out on some big cash. Here are the winning numbers 10, 16, 40, 52, 55, and 17. Now, the prize is $50,000, and the winning ticket was sold at Aramark Corporation Detroit Wayne on this day of last year. And it's the last day that the prize can be claimed. So if anyone discovers that they have the winning ticket, you need to contact the Michigan Lottery as soon as possible. You don't want to let that money go down the drain. Next at noon, a new weather satellite is set to launch today. Find out what it'll help scientists do to help those living on the West Coast. Plus, Russian President Vladimir Putin unveils his new array of nuclear weapons. What he has in the work days leading up to his election. What he has in the works. And a battle over belongings. The Florida school shooter's guardian is in court. What she's fighting for in the wake of the massacre. We're back in a minute. As classes continue at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, more details are coming out about the Florida shooter's background. And today, his guardian is in court fighting to be in control of his mother's estate. 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz's mother died last year, and another family took him in. Roxanne Deschamps from that family is now asking the probate court to add her as a beneficiary to the estate of Linda Cruz, the shooter's mother. Deschamps' attorney has confirmed she's also seeking to add Nicholas's brother as a beneficiary as well. Russian President Vladimir Putin unveils his new array of nuclear weapons today. Putin saying that his country has tested weapons, including a nuclear-powered cruise missile and a nuclear-powered underwater drone that would be immune to en an enemy intercept. His comments came during the State of the Nation speech in Moscow, Russia's presidential election 17 days away. And finally, the late Reverend Billy Graham is receiving the rare distinction of lying in honor at the Capitol Rotunda. Graham's remains arrived Wednesday in a somber ceremony that was attended by the president, first lady, the entire congressional leadership, and countless members of the House and state. Graham passed away at his North Carolina home at the age of 99, and he'll be laid to rest tomorrow besides his wife, in North Carolina. A new weather satellite is set to launch today that will help scientists track wildfires, fog and storms that threaten the United States. The United Launch Alliance will send the Eagle Eyed Atlantis 5 rocket in orbit this afternoon. And in addition to helping scientists, it's also expected to give forecasters high definition data from almost the entire Western Hemisphere. So that will definitely come in handy. So to come here on Local 4 News at noon, new products geared towards student safety. We'll tell you what concern, what one concerned dad developed that could be in classrooms all across the country. Brandon? Almost creepy to watch this radar and the snow just closing in on us. If you haven't seen the flakes flying yet, 
you will very soon. Snow totals and troubles and a look into the weekend next. Bullies in a suburban school attacking other children with hurtful racial remarks. Kids started talking about how um, they were glad Trump was building the wall because Mexicans don't deserve to live in Michigan. A mother brought to tears, a father demanding answers. But if you don't address it to the parent, you are endorsing, allowing those kind of racist remarks to take place and nobody's held accountable. And now the ACLU is involved. Is the school responding appropriately? The Defenders, tonight at 11. And I don't know how you live... Hi, I'm Bob. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are still under this severe weather alert, and the road conditions are going to get pretty bad today as we want to give you a live look at the drive. This is in the Troy area along I-75, right in between Square Lake and Crooks in the Troy area. Uh, you can see snow starting to come down in that area, and it looks like cars are going at posted speeds, but Brandon, the snow is going to be accumulating today. Absolutely is, and it probably would be worse if it was heavy snow and then rain on top of that because it creates a uh, just a crust, a slushy oh nastiness, but this is no picnic either with uh, some roads that probably have pooling and ponding on them. As we speak, numbers are dropping and then the snow on top of that will make it hard perhaps to see some of these pools and ponds on the road. So just bottom line, don't really focus so much on exactly how much snow you're going to get. The temperature here or there, a movement of the heavy snow band 10 miles north or south is going to make a big difference, but it is a dangerous storm to be out traveling in, and that's what we need to walk away with. 36 with a northeast wind at 17, visibility two miles at the airport, but down to a quarter mile or less in some spots. That's part of of the problem. Oakland, Livingston County still uh, will be the rogue two counties with this winter storm warning until 4 a.m. on Friday for five to nine inches of snow. And again, the rest of us with this winter weather advisory three to six, I think a lot of us surrounding Detroit will end up with four or five inches when all is said and done, but a lot of variables here happening. Heavy rain becoming slushy, dangerous troubles with the travel. One inch of snow per hour, especially between two and 8 p.m., maybe a little bit longer than that in some spots. So you need to know that heading out and about is really at your own risk. And the radar sometimes isn't perfectly picking up exactly what is coming down. As you see, just one frame to the next, boom, flashes over to snow. It can quickly flash back to rain, snow, maybe some ice pellets as well. But essentially, it is all flipping over to snow. I looked outside just a minute ago, and although the radar claims rain mainly it is snowing outside of our window here downtown and it's coming in and will be coming in for a while 30s rain to snow heaviest between 2 and again 8 or 10 p.m. and ending at 2 a.m. an icy morning drive coming your way because of those 20s on top of whatever we get this afternoon and evening area of low pressure is just perfectly placed here central Indiana and Ohio so it will continue to lift moisture to the north and it will feed into our cooler air. So a couple of models here again, six to eight plus inches in parts of Livingston and Oakland County with the rest of us seeing a little bit less than that. I want to show this model is very similar, but we have a, another model. This is what's been making things so complicated. M59 South. This model saying six to ten for a lot of us. So we need to pack our patience and again, not worry so much about the snow totals, uh, but tomorrow will be an improvement. We'll get some melting and the weekend, Evrod, is calm. Well, at least it's calm for the weekend, Brandon, thank you. So after the deadly shooting down in Parkland, Florida, where 17 people were killed, the debate over gun control has really taken center stage, especially when it comes to how we protect our children. There's one company led by a concerned father that plans to be part of the solution. Robert Lowe reports. At an industrial park, you can find Yasser Sheikh. The president of Guard Dog Security created these so-called bulletproof backpacks 
aimed at protecting your children. A father of two, Shake, came up with the idea shortly after the Sandy Hook school shooting. We felt like there was going to be a continuous need for this type of product. And there is. Just two months into 2018, eight school shootings have already taken place. They're protected against nine millimeters and 44 magnums. You have your back against the shooter, pull it over your head, cover your back, cover the back of your head, cover your vital organs. Well, is this bulletproof backpack truly effective? Well, Deputy Post here at the Volusia County Sheriff's Office Training Center is putting that to the test right now. You can feel it in there. It is definitely gonna stop a nine millimeter, no problem. While they do protect against some lower caliber weapons, this backpack won't hold up against a high velocity rifle like the AR-15 used by the Parkland school shooter. Despite that, company sales have surged 150% since the massacre. Every backpack online is sold out. Not surprising to Sheriff Mike Chitwood, who says the numbers are proof parents will try to do anything and everything to safeguard students. If they feel that this gives them a little bit better of a sense of security when they send their child off to school, then who am I to tell them not to do it? And Guard Dog Security isn't even stopping there. They have pledged to donate all the proceeds of their backpacks and to families and victims of the Parkland, Florida shooting. That is uh, very impressive. All right, still ahead. The true cost of happiness. Find out just how much couples spend to tie the knot on their special day. That more when we come back. All 106. Severe weather alert and Tim Pamplin is out driving in it for us, so you don't have to. He's on 75 near the Oakland Mall heading south, and you can see that it is snowing there and quite a bit of moisture on the roads. At times, Tim said, a quarter mile visibility or less, so dangerous stuff out there. And here's a look. Watch this flashover from rain to boo, almost like a big kick a big boot through gross eel, uh, but it's happening all around and will continue to happen as we head through the rest of the afternoon and evening, which is why Livingston, Oakland counties, be careful. You could be up there at nine inches or so in some spots when all is said and done. The rest of us probably averaging around four or five inches with one inch per hour possible as we head through the rest of your afternoon. All right, well, finally here at noon, if you're planning on walking down the aisle anytime soon, the latest survey from the Knot reveals that wedding costs have decreased slightly. Well, in 2017, the average cost range in at more than $33,000. That's about two grand down from the previous year, and that's not even including the honeymoon. The survey found that couples are spending less on attire, but choosing to splurge on the venue and guest experiences. And if you want to save the cheapest place in the U.S., New Mexico. If you feel like going there to get married, why not? Santa you can Fe. always save the most money, though, by going to the courthouse. Right. You know, that's what I did my first time. Or isn't common law marriage is cheap, too? There you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then just back to the house, everybody. We're going to have <laughs> chips and salsa. And just have a party there. Everybody <laughs> bring your own. <laughs> oh, it's a potluck. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. Stay safe out there.